You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. We'll call this meeting of the Brantford Planning Zoning Commission to order. It is Thursday, October 7, 2021. I have 7.05 p.m. I'll introduce members of our commission and staff. To our far right, we have Commission Member John Lust next to John, Commission Member Joe Chadwick next to Joe, Commission Member Joe Bayuso. Turning the corner, Commission Member Fred Russo to my left, Commission Member Marcy Pelusi, and next to Marcy is Commission Member Massimo Liguri. Our staff this evening is our town planner, Harry Smith, and next to Harry is Assistant Planner Evan Brining, and our Clerk Recording Secretary Michelle Martin is over in the corner. I am Chuck Anders Chair, and just for the record, I will note that I did have a bicycle accident yesterday, so if you notice a, a, like a demarcation on the side of my face and a black eye, you're correct. Should have seen the other guy, but uh, so um, with that, we will proceed and we'll ask our Secretary to read the Notice of Public Hearing. The Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Brantford, Connecticut hereby gives notice of public hearings to be held on Thursday, October 7th at 7 p.m. in person at the Brantford Fire Headquarters, 45 North Main Street, Brantford, Connecticut, to consider the following. One, application number 21-6.9, special exception modification for a multifamily dwelling located at 4 3 Elm Road, ALMR LLC, care of David Diatri, applicants and owner. Item number two, application number 21-9.4, alter conditions of a previous special exception approval for a barn located at 3 Elms Road, Peter Custerer, applicant and owner. Item number three, application number 21-9.2, zoning map amendment, change Commerce Park CP zone to incentive housing overlay zone, IHOD, located at 5 and 13 Summit Place, Brantford Summit Apartments, LLC, care of Frank Vigliotti, applicant and owner. Item number four, application number 21-9.3, special exception for a multifamily development located at 5 and 13 Summit Place, Brantford Summit Apartments, LLC, care of Frank Vigliotti, applicant and owner. Lastly, item number five, application number 21-9.5, special exception for grading, section 6.8, related to a multifamily development IHOD located at 5 and 13 Summit Place, Brantford Summit Apartments, LLC, care of Frank Vigliotti, applicant and owner. It said hearings, all persons will have the right to be heard and written communications will be received. A copy of the application is on file in the Planning and Zoning Commissioner's Office at the Planning and Zoning Department, 1019 Main Street, Brantford. Thank you, Marcy. We'll follow our normal format for public hearing. The applicant goes first, makes its presentation, have any consultants they can speak as well uh, then we turn it over to the Commission and staff uh, typically we have the staff summarize the staff report open it up for questions comments from Commission members at that point we'll open it up to the public we actually you come forward uh, you, we have a microphone here or you could use the podium you state your name and address for the record uh, make whatever comments you like and then we allow uh, after the public portion is done we allow the applicant to respond to the public comments uh, we may or may not continue or complete the public hearing depending on how it goes. So with that, we'll start, we'll go through our agenda. We do have copies of our agenda and some staff reports up front if you'd like to take a look at those. For item number one, our agenda is the public hearing for Nick Magnata, uh, John and Rochelle Bercille, attorney Joseph Porter owners. This is the 54 and 60 North Main Street. This is a special exception for the car wash that we opened at our last meeting. And that one's actually continued to our next meeting on October 21. So we're not going to uh, discuss that one this evening, but although that is on our agenda, it's actually on for our next meeting, our October 21 meeting. That brings us then to item number two, which is a special exception for grading for the car wash that's uh, in connected with that same application. So that one is also being continued to our October 21 meeting. Brings us then to item number three, so we're speedily moving through our agenda, and that's the Sunrise Cove, 12 Sunrise Cove's camp, Robert Cal Calgillaria and Pam Everett owner. 
And I understand uh, what's the situation with that, Harry? Are we continuing that one as well? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we received a request from the applicant to um, continue the public hearing to the next meeting on the 21st also without any testimony being taken tonight. Okay. So if you're here for item number three, that's the 12 Sunrise Cove camp that we've uh, heard some, uh, we've discussed that already. That's going to be continued also to our October 21 meeting. And for the record, the applicants also offered a time extension through the 21st to allow okay, the Okay, so we've gotten the appropriate time extension. Yep. Thank you, Harry. So uh, item number three is continued to our October 21st meeting. Uh, and then that brings us to item number four, which is Peter Custer, uh, applicant owner for 3, three, three Elms Road, special exception modification to alter the conditions of a previous special exception approval for the construction of an oversized accessory structure, a barn. Are you ready to proceed, sir? Yes. Hello? Yeah, that's probably. Can everyone see this behind me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just so you know, Maybe I just, but this is just a picture of my proposed barn and the existing or the, and the most recent site plan, but I intend to provide you with a, a, a new site plan once we've, uh, <clears throat> once we've approved all these conditions I'm seeking approval for. Do you mind moving just a little so that you can see everything? Yeah. The, uh, <clears throat> and first of all, let me just thank you for approving the barn in the first place. All, all I'm here to do is to make some minor uh, changes that are extremely logical, appropriate, and legal uh, and to modify some of the conditions that were put on here some of which were uh, inappropriate and one of which was illegal but I'll, I'll explain anyway I'm not trying to do anything major I just I, I, I go through the list with you but the, the very thing that's uh, that struck me when I got the list of conditions is associated with the prior approval. The one other thing that struck me was that uh, it was requiring a 10 foot wide landscaping all the way around the back of the barn. I said, well, if you look at the design of the barn, which was approved, it's got doors on three sides. The purpose of the barn is to store my, uh, my boats and, and be able to wheel them in and out of there, and also storage for my tenants and even for my own stuff for my house, because that all our other properties are in the flood zone, and this is a, a place where we can store things without ever getting wet. But I need to be able to uh, get, get all the way around the barn with the uh, trailers and the cars. Now, I have, however, provided landscape on the front of the building. Uh, and let me just also say, I went to a lot of trouble to provide all of you with a complete list of the proposed changes and the logic associated with those changes. Uh, and uh, none of them are major. However, the, uh, so uh, one of them is obviously the issue about the, the, the parking or the 10-foot uh, wide landscaping behind the barn, which would be behind a six-foot high fence so the neighbor, neighbors wouldn't see it, the people on the street wouldn't see it, and the neighbors wouldn't see it because of the fences. So there's no point in having it. And also the fact that it, it limits the use of the barn, which is already approved, uh, so, uh, but I do have landscaping where it's appropriate, and I, I gave you all, uh, did, do you all have the things that I sent you, which shows you the proposed landscaping in front of the building? And, uh, anyway, the, uh, <clears throat> that, that's, that's one of the issues. I, I have no problem with, with uh, landscaping where it's visible from the street. And uh, I, gave, I gave you people one of these. And this simply shows uh, landscaping in front of the barn right here. The, the road is out here. And uh, uh, one of the other things that was uh, required in the, in the uh, conditions which I couldn't understand at all, said, I uh, have to eliminate the, the driveway. I never 
applied for a driveway. I never applied for a curb cut whatsoever. Uh, <clears throat> strictly a, a work area where I can pull the boats out and, and work on them from time to time and, uh, and you know, wash, wash them and things like that. But uh, I never even asked for a curb cut. However, I, would, I, will, I will say this to you. I think you should recommend a curb cut there uh, in a driveway because uh, I, I, uh, <coughs> there's, no, there's, no, there's no curbing all the way up and down the street except right here in front of the site, number one. Number two, um, I could legally have a driveway here if I eliminated one of the other driveways that's on that road and created a driveway instead into my parking lot from Thimble Islands Road, which would tragically eliminate two parking places or more on, on Thimble Islands Road where parking is really needed. But yet, by having a driveway here, that doesn't eliminate a single parking place on, on Three Elms Road because there aren't any parking places on Three Elms Road. So I just throw that out for whatever it's worth. I'm not, I'm not demanding a driveway. I'm simply saying that I think you should be demanding a driveway there. But that, anyway, I was told to eliminate it, and I never even uh, asked for a driveway. I just, and, and I, I don't understand why it even looked like that on, the, on that chart, because uh, this is what I originally uh, showed. So here's the barn. This pink area here is landscaping, and this is the uh, work area in front, and here's the road out here. So you all have that. Um, as far as the uh, uh, landscaping behind the barn, which would be back here, is, is uh, crazy because we need to be able to get the doors here, here, and here. I need to be able to get all the way around the, th the barn, especially if I don't have a driveway. Uh, one of the other conditions that I want to address here, which is perfectly logical, is I have been approved by the Z ZBA for, to have my eight boats in the, in the, on the site. As a practical matter, I'll probably have half of them indoors most of the time in the barn. But anyway, and I was asked by, I forget your name. I, I was asked by this lady here as a courtesy. She asked if I could show her on my site plan where those boats are uh, kept. And the reason they're kept there, just so you know, originally I was told uh, you can't have boats inside the setback line. But if you look at your own zoning book, it says you can't have them inside the street line setback and you can't have them inside the sideline setback, but there's zero reference whatsoever to the rear property line. And the reason they're stored along the rear property line is to make them as far away from the road as possible so they're not all that visible. And right up against a six foot high fence, the neighbor has said he doesn't, they don't have to look at it. So <clears throat> anyway, and so it was all approved. But, but as a courtesy, she asked me to show where I've been storing those boats. Now I don't always store them there. I store them some of them most of the time there. But anyway, I did that as a courtesy, but then condition came down and said that's the only place I can store the boats. With all due respect, the law says everybody can park their boats anywhere they want on their property except inside the street line setback and except the sideline setback. Any place else they're allowed to. As a practical matter, like I said, someone will be in the barn and, uh, uh, <clears throat> and some of them will be out there, but I, I, I I, I want to point out to you that to say that that's the only place they can be stored is illegal, with all due respect. And because everybody is entitled to store them anywhere they want except those two places I just mentioned. So I did that as a courtesy, but I don't want it to turn into some kind of a limitation requirement. Okay, also, uh, one of my other issues is uh, <clears throat> down here in the parking lot. This line here is a line which was required to put a guardrail in by the ZBA. And I, when I, and I think that's a complete uh, farce because nobody parks pointing that way. They park toward the, build, toward the house, <coughs> they to, park toward the street and toward the house. They don't park here. Moreover, 
uh, there are stones there to prevent people from ever driving onto the lawn, but the stones at least don't uh, affect the septic area because the septic field area is, is down here. And if, you, and if I put guardrail posts in, they're going to go right into the septic field. And just so you also know, there are two other parking lots within 75 feet of the site that have no guardrails whatsoever, and they're commercial. The town road in front of my house has no guardrails, and the cars are parking there, pushing the stones down into the water. And if you go to the town hall, there's no guardrails there, and people are parking their cars on the lawn in front of the churches. And this is private. Those are all public. I'm simply saying to put a guardrail there where nobody pulls toward that is absurd. I also need access to be able to get, if that guardrail would then block access for the people who dealing with the uh, propane pipes, the big propane tanks, because they have to move them in and out, and, uh, and septic area and so forth. So I, I just want to leave the, the Stony Creek granite stones there, which prevent people from parking. The stones don't stick into the septic field area. And they, uh, they are Stony Creek stones. And Stony Creek stones are sold for a lot of money. Anyway. So that's one of the issues that, there that I'm trying to address. All the, the only changes I'm seeking here are extremely logical and reasonable. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, also, uh, let's see. And, and instead, this, did, did you gentlemen see this thing that I gave you? This is simply a proposal that I had submitted to, to Harry a, a long time ago uh, as, as an alternative for any 10-foot wide landscaping down there behind the, uh, behind the barn and behind the house. So, uh, and that's something that the, form, the former, the neighbor used to want. See, these are arborvitaes. You know, ten foot wide, right, right along the border, and uh, uh, and that allows access in and, in and around there without, and no, nobody's going to see that except for the neighbor, which is what he wanted. Okay, um, let's see what else we got here. One of the other, one of the other issues is. I'm suggesting a, a, a very slight relocation of the proposed uh, dumpster. And I gave you this to show several pages showing both the existing approval and the proposed changes. All I'm simply seeking to do is, is to take the, the dumpster, uh, to, to move the dumpster's location angle slightly differently and move it over a few feet toward the existing concrete slab, which I was told that had to be removed. But that concrete slab is going to be the walkway from the deli and from my tenants across the street directly into the dumpster. And all we'd be doing is taking the same landscaping and just changing the angle of it a little bit. And the reason we're changing the angle of it is because the dumpster people want it changed. Because when they come into the driveway of that lot, it's easier for them to come in and back into it on a diagonal instead of 90 degrees because there's trucks, because there's cars parked across the street, could be in his way. <clears throat> so I'm simply, to make it simple, I'm simply talking about changing the angle, but having it otherwise be the same dumpster thing, but instead of eliminating with the uh, slab that's there, that would be, if you look at the diagram, did you have, have you people looked at these? Yeah. You'll see that all it's doing is slightly changing the angle, and otherwise all the landscaping would be the same, but just a slightly different angle. Um, so, just, <laughs> just so you know also, originally somebody wanted me to have a sidewalk along uh, Three Elms Road going to the dumpster. There isn't a single inch of sidewalk on that road. So why would I have a public sidewalk to a private dumpster? And by the way, there are hundreds of people down there on a regular basis 
who are always filling up my trash cans and, and trying to get in their dumpsters. So the last thing I would ever want is a public sidewalk to a private dumpster. Whereas the, the existing concrete slab that's there now is an appropriate walkway into the proposed relocated dumpster location. Uh, and if you carefully look at this, the several pages here which shows each of the, it shows the diagram of the proposed change in the landscaping location, the proposed change in the dumpster location, proposed, uh, uh, well, and it also shows as compared to the old, because these, these changes are, are drawn over the existing site plan, so you can see the difference. Um, <coughs> As, okay. as for the the uh, as for the uh, plant, plantings along uh, Thimble Islands Road along the edge of the parking lot, I am proposing because that's in a flood zone. I am proposing. I am proposing this type of low cut, year round green, it's not cedar, I don't know what the name of the plant is, but this is up the road, it's very similar. It's a juniper. Huh? It's a juniper. Uh-huh. And it's very, it's very nice, it's nice and low, and it covers the ground, and then in between those, I'm proposing not filling like this, because when the tide comes in and floods the zone, that'll all float around into the parking lot into the street. So what I'm suggesting is that between those plants, there would be stone like this, round river stone, which doesn't flood, it doesn't float away. And uh, this is over on, uh, this particular picture is on, on a house over there near Pine Orchard. but. Uh, that curve near the, the huh? dumpster, or where's that going? Where are you proposing that for? No, this, this is uh, along Symbol Islands Road, the along the edge of the parking lot. This side, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I just changed the issue. The, if you want to go back to the dumpster issue, I'm perfectly no, no, willing to answer any questions. Stay with me, that's all. Okay. So then I took, <clears throat> now if you notice, remember I told you that the barn has doors on three sides of it? One location, two location, three locations on three sides. So I definitely need to be able to access it. So having landscaping back there, which is, and, and there's only 10 feet between there and the rear property line. And as far as the size of the barn is concerned, it's completely legal and it was approved because if it was attached, typically if, it's a, if you have a garage or barn, the size is limited. It's detached from the ground. Attached to the house, it could be any size you want as long as the total square footage doesn't exceed the, the zoning limit. So it was granted because all the land between the house and the proposed barn is future septic area that is not only uh, that is absolutely required and approved and has been tested and approved by the health department. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and also the barn proposed barn location is going to be on ledge for a fair, fair amount of us going to be on, on the ledge. So that leaves this area in between the house and the barn as, a, as the uh, future septic field. Not just the land between, but even around, even around the end of it as the future septic field. Now, one of the other issues that uh, I would like to have you address. One of the other issues was I was told that I had to, that I had to collect all the rainwater off of the roof of the barn, down underground into concrete tanks with holes in them. And the site in here is going to be basically leveled. Uh, and to do that would be if this if this whole area is the future septic field. So why would I purge the septic field with all the water off the roof? But it would be just as much more logical to just let it 
fall on the grass, the grass likes rain, water, and it allows it to filter gradually and it's level, so it's not going to be pouring into anybody's yard. It's just logical. And I, I, I'm not trying to blame anybody for anything. I'm just trying to inform you of the circumstances related to, to the, this proposed barn and the logic behind it. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to have landscaping uh, here, here, here. And this is that drive. This is the former site plan to show this is a driveway. And I don't even know why it looks like that because really the, the work area is going to be the entire width here, which I show you, which I just showed you already. And uh, now, as a practical matter, uh, the only curbing on the road is, is right here. <laughs> uh, and if I have to back over that curbing once or twice a year, most people do it once or twice a day. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, let's see if it's, all right, I have some other issues I just want to find them before I forget them. Uh, please understand that none of these proposed changes are major. I'm trying to, uh, Point out that they're strictly logical and appropriate and legal. Uh, oh, there was another question about the driveway issue uh, in front of the house here, that it was not considered to be, uh, uh, well, I, I guess it's been approved, but it wasn't considered to be legitimate. Well, I got news for you. This used to be a garage, and the foundation is still there. So that number changed. The only thing that's changed is the garage is no longer there. But the parking has always been there. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, oh, one of the other things is I want to make sure that I can get the building permit and the zoning permit now, not after all the landscaping is done. The landscaping should be done after all the construction is done, after all the regrading of the site done, that's when you do the landscaping. You don't put a bunch of landscaping in and then end up destroying it when you're working with, with the bulldozers and plows and, and uh, regrading and so forth. Uh, so, um, and as far as the dumpster is concerned, we'll do it all at the same time with the same construction people. We can start, and it can only be done fall, winter, and spring because in the summertime, this lot is full. And uh, uh, <clears throat> so I don't want to have the permit held back over landscaping, which shouldn't even be done until the construction is completed and the site is the, the, the final grading of the site. And then I will do the landscaping very nicely. Uh, let's see. Um, Also, which I mentioned in, in some of the readings that I gave you, I went to a lot of trouble to, to lay out all of the issues and the logic behind it so that uh, there wouldn't be a lot of mystery. But uh, uh, <clears throat> anyway, so if the meeting gets closed and it turns out that there's some indiscretion here, I want to be able to speak up and say, hey, wait a minute, I need to verify that, which I wasn't able to do last time, but that's up to you. Um, okay, there has to be total non-reference whatsoever to the invalid uh, agreement between Sam Morris and me. That agreement can no longer exist. It is completely invalid, and it is completely invalid for several reasons, all of which I've described to you on that paperwork. If you want me to describe it to you now, I'd be happy to. And, it's, and, the, and the Zoning Board of Appeals has already acknowledged that. It has nothing to do with zoning whatsoever and should not even be referenced because it does not exist. It is invalid. And it's invalid because it never contained any of the, the site plan 
that was supposed to be shown for this proposed uh, uh, site work that they wanted. Uh, it was also agreed and signed by him and his attorney that uh, this was just between us and not to be submitted to the, the Zoning Board of Appeals. And they did it anyway. And the Zoning Board of Appeals has since acknowledged that it has nothing whatsoever to do with the zoning. And <clears throat> let's see. Um, now, I've done him so many favors, just so you know. I've done that neighbor so many favors. When he wanted to do his renovations there, he didn't know what to do. He asked me all about materials and things to use, and I hooked him up with all the right materials, showed him what to use, hooked him up with the best contractor he could have possibly gotten, and, uh, and he did it. And uh, I let him use my land to store all his lumber, all his roofing materials, all his ladders, all his equipment, while he did the work. And then after it all happened, he comes to the post. The news attorney is here to, to, to look to do it again. And let me just tell you, he illegally added a bedroom with no zoning permit whatsoever, knew he couldn't do it, so he never applied for it. And as a neighbor, I'm supposed to be notified, just like all of these people are notified for whatever I do. He added a bedroom without in, a, in, a, in an undersized septic field area with no approval whatsoever. Did $150,000, $160,000 worth of work with a $20,000 permit. And according to the contractor that I hooked him up with, according to him, he got stiffed for $46,000. And he almost lost his house on foreclosure, and he had to pay a lawyer $25,000 to save his home. Now, no disrespect against the attorney here, but I just want, want you to understand, if they object, they have no standing at all. <coughs> and, Anyway, uh, and the, the irony of it is, what I'm planning to do here is to their benefit, because it gives them, you know, by having those, those, those things, that he'll be able to maintain uh, some view, you know, toward the, toward the water, which I don't have to do, especially if I do landscaping up. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Cursor? Yes, sir. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. Are, are you thank are you done? Are you okay. done for now? Uh, yeah, for now. I think so, yeah. Okay. I just, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just, you know, I'm not used to this. So. No, nope, no problem. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, Harry, do you want to review the staff report? Uh, sure. Um, as many of you may recall, this whole application was pretty extensively discussed. So there's a fairly uh, voluminous paper trail in uh, prior application and materials in that file. Um, there's pretty lengthy uh, testimony and a pretty lengthy public hearing record from the last application. So um, just as a preamble, I have not gone through and listened to the entire recording of the public hearing for the last time to research all the different questions and aspects of the prior approval that have been raised. I did go through um, everything and provided preliminary comments, I'm calling them, for all the actual wording changes that Mr. Custer's requested. I did request, after some submittal documentation to our office, that um, Mr. Custer 
take the prior notice of decision and strike out the words he did not like and insert words that he's proposing be added, which essentially summarize I believe what you've just presented. Yeah. I mean, there may be a couple of things missing in there, but that's um, what I believe you have in front of you with, um, I think, two or three, I think three other uh, documents that provide rationale and reasons, similar to what you just heard verbally from Mr. Custer. Um, I would like to, just for the record, enter the entire record of the prior application the whole public hearing, all the testimony, just so it's in front of the commission and, and the process that was application number 19-9.3 into the record of this application. So we can go back and pull that information out and should there be something that I haven't pulled out into my staff report and this question that arises during deliberations, we can go back and get that information also and bring it in front of you without incurring any kind of legal issue. So just like to do that for the record. Um, the second thing I'd like to mention is that you were shown and have in your documents um, several excerpts from prior site plan with proposed changes on them in like a form of an eight and a half, 11 pieces of paper or called up. Um, technically, um, the regulations would have required all the modifications to be shown in a revised site plan. Um, the applicant asked and I said it would bring before you a request to not have him incur the cost of going back to the professional to prepare the site plan and add all those changes. Um, so you do have a request essentially for a waiver under section 9.6.C2, which would allow you to waive uh, requirements for the application in terms of documentation and the site plan and so forth. I did um, let you know, Mr. Custer, that should the commission want to uh, approve any of the changes he's requested, that we would probably require, and I would imagine the commission would require, a formal revised version of the site plan for those things you did possibly approve. I will provide you with the new final site plan once yeah. we that, that's, the, that's exactly what I just said. Yeah, so it's, it's not, I'm no, not I, trying to avoid giving you a site plan, it's just that I've come up with so many of them, they're so expensive each time, I wanna make sure that the last, the last site plan it covers it. And, and, yeah. and illustrates everything we've just yeah. discussed. Yeah. yeah, and I said I thought that was a reasonable request, so I, I you know, this is before you on that basis tonight, yeah. but you okay. would formally have to waive the. <laughs> and I got so, one other thing to say. I want to thank you for what you've already done. And the reason it's taken so long is we've had the COVID thing, which no longer allowed these public things. I had some huge medical issues, not COVID, but AFib and pacemaker, because they over. So I was prevented from doing this sooner. But I've been working on this since 2016, and it's going to be a gorgeous work and it's going to be a benefit for the neighbors in terms of their values of their properties. Thank you. Thank you. You can continue, Harry. Thank you. Um, so also I just want to say that I did not find anywhere in the documentation that um, there have been any, uh, or there was no documentation of any change in circumstances um, in respect to abutting properties or the demolition of buildings or combination of properties or anything that would have possibly uh, created a significant change in um, circumstances that you might want to consider in looking at this application. Uh, does anything like that? I'm asking the applicant to present that to the commission. Um, as I, from the, <laughs> Um, so with that, I just go through my staff report. Um, you should have that in front of you. It's a memo from myself to the commission dated October 1st. And um, what I did um, in attempt to clarify um, what was presented by the applicant, it was a little difficult. I found to read. I did look very closely. Um, fortunately, I am nearsighted, so I you know, can take my glasses off and, and, and read it close up. <laughs> it's one of the benefits of being nearsighted. Um, so I took that prior decision from 19, 2019 and I typed in where uh, things were proposed to be struck out and where things were proposed to be added. So that's, and in the middle of all those, 
changes, I inserted some staff comments after each proposed change. So just walking through those on uh, condition two, which um, you can read at the bottom of the first page of my uh, staff report. Um, the proposal is to change the wording to switch prior to the to with this. So the effect of that would be to uh, categorize the site plan approval or actually special exception approval and the embedded site plan approval as a zoning permit. Um, the zoning regulations have a section about zoning permits. The zoning permits are a staff level approval. They're only issued by the zoning enforcement officer. Um, so you can't really phrase it that way and be in conformance with the regulations. It's the implementation of the commission's decisions. Uh, so if the commission, for example, made this approval and wanted several changes to or other conditions, the zoning enforcement officer is going to prior signing off on a building permit, go through all that and make sure all that is done. Um, so this would basically say um, this is the zoning permit and there would be no check to make sure any of these conditions that have been reworked afterwards are complied with uh, because it just would erase that process. Um, on the next page, um, this is where Mr. Custer has requested that all the improvements listed in the site plan that was approved by the ZBA uh, be postponed till after he uh, completes the barn and the final grading um, rather than have them done beforehand. Uh, my recollection is that this was a request of one of the abutters, neighboring abutters to the project. Right, who has been a chronic well, 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 let me, a pathological obstructionist for uh, 24 years. Okay. I'd just like to finish and then Mr. Yeah, Custer, you still get an opportunity to say whatever you like afterwards. If you can be quiet, we want to hear from our town planner. Yeah, You'll have a chance to respond to any comments. Um, so that is the, uh, that was the genesis of this. And um, most of the changes in my mind would not affect the construction of the barn outside of the little bit of landscaping around the barn itself, which possibly could tweak the wording to address. Um, this, in fact, I believe is, is this the version dated? This is one version after. So this is not actually the version of the plan referred to by the condition. Uh, that version of the plan. This is just here to help you see what, what the plan is. If you actually look in uh, the staff report, all the number of attachments to it on page 13 of 14 of the attachments, well, it's the whole staff report actually, it's uh, 11 by 17. Um, and that version of the plan, which is what that condition refers to, doesn't show any landscaping around the barn. This is the preliminary, if you will, version of the site plan that was. Uh, with the ZBA approval for the variance. So I think with reference to this plan, there's no landscaping around the barn, so there shouldn't be any conflict between constructing the barn and moving the dumpster, putting the plantings in, putting the guardrail in, all the other aspects that the ZBA actually required as part of their variance. Does that make, any, make sense? This is one version back from that plan. The only reason it was required is because they settled for what the neighbors said. And, and her complaint was well, the dumpster location, okay. which is why. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm asking that more than <laughs> Yeah, can, we, we, yeah. Can we, we'll, we'll continue. Harry, you can continue. The, the ZBA, Excellent. are the ZBA conditions of approval somewhere in this documentation? Um, yes, there's a ZBA variance in here. Um, Tell you what page that's on. That is on page 11 of 14. And that's one of the notices of decision, so that and you see the variances that were approved as part of this is dated May 24th, 2018. And where the check is, it says approve your 
above subject application as requested with construction be consistent with the site plan and documents submitted with the application on file. And it says for requested and cites a number of the different um, variances that were issued. And it says as depicted on site plan revised to 5118. And that's the site plan on page 13 of 14. Does not show any landscaping around the barn yet. It just shows the landscaping, which is the, I think a compact holly, um, down by Thimble Islands Road, adjoining the property at 214 Thimble Islands Road. It shows the relocation of the dumpster, the removal of the dumpster pad in the dumpster at the corner, partially in the town right away, as well as the landscaping um, in that little corner at the intersection of three, three Elms Road and Thimble Islands Road. So moving along. Um, so I'm, I'm confused by the notice of the decision. The, of the CBA's decision? Yeah, it looks like they approved part of it and then denied the part about the boats. They denied six two e one two. I'm just trying to say why the deny is checked. Because um, he was seeking, I think, permission to use the side lot line, and I believe it's the rear area you can use, not the side or the front. So there are so different locations for that. Well, they said he can do it in the rear as it's shown, but he was also requesting, I believe, um, ability to store boats in the side. What's considered the side and what's considered well, the, the side? Well, for, for a corner lot, it's basically the applicant's choice. So um, the, the way it was presented, I believe, to the CBA was that this is the front, this is the rear, this is the side, and this is whatever else. The other front and the front. Right, so there was, so you'd have to keep them out of this little corner, okay. that 10 foot area. So right. I think you wanted the ability to go over there in that corner. Okay. Well, I, I just, just wanted to understand yeah, what yeah, that yeah. meant. Yeah. And the conditions you're referring to, Harry, what page are they on here? They're page. Uh, the conditions of the, well, they're feathered into my staff report comments. They're also. No, yeah, the ZBA conditions. Oh, the ZBA. Yeah. That the, it's on. Page 11 of 14. There's a notice of decision. It says dated uh, May 24th, 2018. Okay. And in the middle there, that second block with a checkbox, they approve the variances as depicted on the site plan revised to. Okay, that just refers to the plan. There's no additional conditions, though? No. Okay. I have to go back, and that's another, as you know, I mentioned in my preamble, I have not gone to a fairly well on all the, the information present in the prior applications. I have to go back to the ZBA and see how they phrase that. My understanding was it was subject to removal of the dumpster from the corner and the landscaping, um, the compact hollies. And there was a limitation on, I think, the, uh, they did approve eight boats rather than, I think, there was a discussion that was, there was a violation that more than one was cited as being a violation and of the regulations. Also, the 18-foot limit. What the, say the eight alleys have been replaced, is that in conflict with the ZBA's approval? Because the site plan's changed, or we have, we have jurisdiction to well, I think modify, the, modified site plan. I think the plan. final the final end result here was to leave the hollies where they were, um, and to fill in between the hollies and the boat storage area in quotes, um, which could be what the proposal is. It could be that line of arborvitae, um, but I think, as I recall, and I went back and listened to this part of it, the commission was basically deferring to me to accept the proposal from Mr. Custer, which could be that and also contact the bunny property owner, Mr. Morris, and try to work so, something out. So some level of planting, whether it's hollies or arborvitaes, that... Yeah, I think the hollies were gonna be where they were, and it was gonna be between the hollies and the boat storage area, was how to fill that in, was the open question a little bit. Okay, and then who has final yeah. 
I, you guys deferred to me, and if it wasn't going to, you know, it could come back to you or something if it couldn't be worked out. I think there also was a discussion about whether there was enough room to have landscaping um, to the right on the plan through the boat storage area along the property line. I believe that was also requested by the budding property owner. And I think the conclusion of the commission that I recall was there wasn't enough room to really do anything. Right, so the fence was the, the fence was enough, right. Yeah, I'm yeah. Doing on the property line. Right. By the way, his fence is on my property. It's, that's not gonna happen anymore. Well, moving on along, um, the drainage issue. Um, the actual wording of the, that condition says drainage improvements and are grading revisions shall be added to the satisfaction of the town engineer. I guess you gotta read the words right out of it so I get it correctly. Shall be added to the satisfaction of the town engineer to capture the roof drainage from the barn structure. So there was no proposal to put it on the ground per se. Um, there was no proposal on the site plan as to how to handle it from the applicant's engineer at that time, which was Jim Peretti from Griscolo. Um, so my recollection is the commission basically deferred to the town engineer how to handle it. So I, my, my opinion is it's a technical issue that um, ought to be resolved by a proposal from the applicant to handle it that would be to the satisfaction of the town engineer in terms of how it could be addressed. Could be underground, could be handled some other way. Um, but that's um, something to be worked out. So you're saying there were no initial Coltec units proposed and, nope. and since the engineer suggested that? That's my so understanding, that's yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'll go back and double check that if that's something you know the commission wants me to look into to make really sure that, but that, I don't see anything on that plan. I don't see anything. I didn't go through the entire file from the last application, but I don't but believe there's anything Mr. proposed. Mr. concern is that he's now being asked to yep. add Coltec units to handle yep. the roof drainage right. where and, it wasn't covered. Right, and that's not really what the words say. They just say, come up with a solution. Okay. It, you know. okay. Um, the next one um, is the wording changes to the condition about the detailed landscaping plan. Um, as I mentioned, um, the 10 foot wide planting strip, which is the, the hollies on this plan, was proposed to be extended over the boat storage area. Um, what is in a 10 foot planting strip? Could it be just a row of arborvitae? Um, you'd move, need to move those back far enough into the property from the property line to let them grow out. I mean, I'll defer to you, Marcy, in terms of what the mature width of an arborvitae is, but I think it's a few feet from the it trunk out. Variety. Okay, it could be giant. If it's a giant, it's a giant, they're quite Right, so. The, the yeah. columnar, they're quite narrow. So. Okay, so it could be, you know, I would think if you planted them in the middle of a 10 foot strip, it could grow out substantially to be the 10 foot planting strip. But the concern is more for height. They're only three feet wide. Than the width, right? Well, I mean, you tell me. I mean, I would think. I would personally accept that it's a 10 foot planting strip. There's a row of arborvitae in the middle of the 10 foot area and they oh. grow out. Right. No, depending on what variety. You no, know, so that's just reasonable. Yeah, no, I think it's there. Well, and, and as I recall, the, the discussion was how far they needed to extend up relative yep. to the bulk storage. And that's where we were talking about the pens. And exactly. That's, to me, that was an agreement. So I'm yeah. not sure if there's a change there. I don't really see one either. I see the proposal as being something that could be accepted. I just want to note that you know putting them right on the property line um, probably is not acceptable because you've got to leave enough room for you know that maturation to extend that plant out to the edge of the property line. Well, right, they should be right. safe, but I'm I'm confused what the new request is. I, I don't think it's a new request as much as it's a request to follow the condition. So that's well, my understanding. What's the change in the condition? Cause well, there is a condition. So you want to do a single row it looks like you're adding five more where we weren't even were we requiring five more along that property line no this was something that we were exposed to a year ago to replace the So there are a couple other changes to landscaping. The language he's proposing, and this is on page three of my staff report, 
um, would involve the modification to the dumpster, which would basically accommodate the proposed change to the dumpster location, which basically brings it back into that landscaping area and leaves the concrete pad partially in the town right away in place, which would contradict what the ZBA referred to in their variance, which was this plan revised through 5118. Um, and it's been the subject of much debate at all the public hearings, including the public hearings about the variances by the neighbors and so forth. Um, so one goes really with the other. I mean, I think some of these changes involve changes that the ZBA relied on um, in issuing the variances on the site plan that was in front of them as part of their application. So I don't know what authority the commission, you know, you could tweak your plan, but does he still have to do it because it's on their plan? I'm not entirely positive of that one way or the other. It depends what status this, I guess, has with respect to the variances issue. What's the basis for moving the dumpster in the first place, the site triangle? Well, the dumpster is um, in a location that a dumpster would never be approved in. Um, because the access to it needs to cross a curb, needs to cross a, a portion of the town right of way. Yeah, I see where you're trying to put it. I'm just, yeah, No, I understand what you're proposing. But yeah, I just, I just want to understand. Yeah, that's where it came from. Right, it's a little should. different now because you can go with to what he's proposing, but it still allow access from the parking lot rather than the street, right? What's that? What you're proposing would require yes. the dump, the truck to come into your parking lot yes. and access it rather than pulling over basically a town right of way onto a pad that's accessed right through the street. So when they come in, it's going to be hard for them to back into this at that angle because of the cars that right. park here. Sense. So if you just change the angle of this, now they can come in and back up on an angle. And that's why uh, this becomes the access, the existing pad, becomes the access to the new dumpster. And actually, the new dumpster is going to be partially on that. You saw the driveway. Yeah, no, I think the angle makes perfect sense. I'm not arguing with the angle. I'm the just only trying to understand if the original reason for moving the dumpster from where it was was due to sight line issues from three Elms Road. To no, it was area. really due to the fact that part of it the landscape is in the town right away. I understand. So the way the truck pulled in here. Well, it, it, I have one opinion if it doesn't, but I have another. Yeah, I, I don't know right now. I mean, I will say that it proposes keeping that pad there, which is partially in the town right away, which I think the, uh, I understand the town engineer has an issue with. So there's that as well. Um, and the town engineer has some comments on this new place? No. Um, the next uh, proposed change, I don't really understand. So maybe, um, I don't think you referred to that in your presentation referring to um, reconsider and possibly change the compact Japanese holly. Um, and you want to add the word zero septic contamination and minimum seawater poisoning after that. So I don't That's understand why I want to use a, a you. He wants to use a, a type of juniper that's more soft tolerant than the holly, yeah. which makes sense. OK. For, yeah, you want to increase the salt tolerance of the all right. Um, the next change is proposed, um, and this was a condition that, uh, and please just let me finish, Mr. Custer. Of um, course. This refers to a document that was presented as part of the testimony from the neighbor, Mr. Morris. Um, I, as staff, did not make any comment on the validity one way or the other of the agreement. I don't take it that anywhere in the, um, the discussion that the commission had the last application that they made any statement about the validity of the agreement one way or the other. I just took it as, as testimony that the applicant would prefer the landscaping to look like this, which was a description of the 
of the desired landscaping between the two properties that was contained in that agreement. So that was the only way I accepted, I looked at it. I didn't look at it as a valid or invalid agreement. It just contained some information presented by the neighbor as to what they wanted the landscaping to look like. Um, so that is why the condition was worded the way it was when I proposed it to the commission, the way you accepted it, was that alternatively, which is just if there is agreement by Mr. Custer, um, the landscaping plan could be changed to reflect the requirements of that agreement, period. There would be no reference to the agreement. Does, I understand what you're saying. Does this new I'll language... Call on the police officer. Does this new language, is it the same intent as what... I, as frankly, I have was? to go back and pull that agreement out if you want to get into this. Well, I, I have to go back... I there's a change. Yeah, I, mean, I just don't know at the moment because I have it going back. It's a, you know... I think this is several pages of the agreement itself, and I haven't gone through every aspect of this, like this I said. It's essentially the same resulting landscaping. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, it, it was, it was uh, my, my understanding, it was a subject of debate between the neighbor and Mr. Custer, and there was a possibility that it might be found valid or wanted to be implemented or something, and this would allow that rather than stand in the way of it. So I mean, it could be stricken, too. Um, the next topic is at the bottom of page three, and it's uh, the following wording is proposed by Mr. Custer, which is slightly modify the angle and location of the proposed dumpster due to the state of necessity for the dumpster company truck driver access. Consequently, existing concrete slabs should remain in place as the access walkway for people filling the dumpster and the partial fence support. So. Um, I do have a concern with the second part of that, which is um, keeping the concrete slab there. Um, looking at that, you know, angle of that and how that will work. Um, if the commission wants to consider that, I'll look at that a little more closely and discuss and look at the site distance or whatever. This is site track. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This. Okay, hang on. Let me keep going. <laughs> I'm going to finish it. Um, e on page four of six. Um, is a proposal by the applicant to eliminate the proposed guardrail, which is again shown on that plan that's referred to in the ZBA's variance um, approval, which is the one revised through 5118, which shows the guardrail replacing the rock line. And then the next one is with respect to the three parking places, existing parking places to the east of the existing house. And I think those are pointed out. Sure, well, they were accepted as. And they are one, two, three right here. Um, this condition as written would not affect those spaces. It just would acknowledge that under the current regulations, they would not, could not be approved if they were brand new. Uh, there's a section of the regulations does not allow you to have a parking space that requires you to back out directly into the street if it's a multifamily property. You can do it if you have a single family residence. It's allowed for that, but it's not allowed for a multifamily. You have to be able to turn around and pull out with your headlights facing out the street. So all this does is it says that those spaces are Grandpa. legally non-conforming. And but grandfather did. Grandfather did, essentially, yeah. yeah. And like I said, the foundation is still there. And I mean, that could the words, the word legally could be added in there, which would possibly clarify everything a little more. Um, then we're down to the uh, driveway in quotes from Three Elms Road to the barn. Um, this plan, as it was proposed, frankly, it looked like a driveway to me since it flared out with radii at the property line and went to a door in the barn and provided a way to get basically to the street right away. I wasn't aware there was a, a curb there. I did go look at it and it's, you know, it's not a very tall curb. You can drive over it, um, but it is a curb. So now it's being proposed to be more of a work area extending right to the property line in the front yard of the structure. I mean, there are requirements for landscaping in the front yard. What you want to do about that, it's up to you, but. This sketch added the a little bit Squirted along the building foundation. 
thought. Yes, it did. It did. Thank you, right here. Along the foundation of the barn itself, yeah. So I'll leave that to you. Um, I'll just, you know, the area is only a few feet from the roadway, so it's easily, you could potentially drive over that area if it's all cleared out and you know, access the street is the driveway. <laughs> Right, so the width of that apron or that work area is now the width of the barn, which is how many feet? 22. How wide is the structure? I don't have a scale, but if it says, you know how big that, wide that is? How wide is the structure? How wide, wide is it? The barn. How wide is the barn? Oh, it's 30, 36 by 48. 48 long, 36 by So it's the whole 36? Yeah. About. And the distance from the road is? Uh, once you get there, you're about maybe. 15.5? Yeah. And that was waived also. That was waived where? In the about the distance from the road? That was one of the variances were issued. So, wait, so which variance was that for? I guess uh, I'm there was a narrow road setback, and I believe that was. Whatever. I can't remember the distance required, but because it's a narrow right of way. So it was a set of variance. No, but it's still in the within the building is in the building setback. So what's the variance? I don't know if this is correct. I'll have to go back and look at that because I'm not. What's the question? There is a narrow roadway setback, and I don't know if this fifteen five was part of your variance issue. Oh, so oh for three elms. It might have been a prior variance. This road will never be widened. It's a dead end road going up to nowhere, and everybody on the street, except for one or two houses, are built right into that. Right. I guess I'm just trying to understand. It might have been a prior right. variant, so that's why that's in there. I have to go back and doubly research that, huh? Yeah, it's I mean, down the street. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to understand relative to the apron, which it seems to be a non sequitur because yeah. the barn is further away from the road and inside the setback more so than the house. So I would assume whatever the house is, is pre-existing, non-conforming, right? With respect that, that, to the right. setback. So yeah. whatever that setback is, he's not worse than the house. What I think happened is he got a variance. That's why it says fifteen five on the plan because he already had the variance. Okay. There were a couple of different shocks at the ZBA, and I think that's what happened. We'll have to go. I'm just trying to understand how much room he actually has yep. to work over that. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Are you doing there? Uh, getting close. Uh, finally, or almost finally, the barn uh, design um, looks like you're proposing to, um, as possible changes, add to what was discussed by the Stony Creek Architecture Review Board, um, larger overhangs and possible windows along the east wall, skylights, etc. Um, if any of these changes are on portions of the facade of the barn that are visible from the public roadway, they would be subject to the Stony Creek Architecture Board review. So I don't have sufficient information to understand no. that and know that based on what we got. Those proposed windows would be on the back of the barn. You know, if they face facing the road at all, if I did them. Okay. Okay. And as far as the extension is concerned, I want to extend these out because they're, they're asking, <laughs> they were asking for wooden windows, which they rot. What, what are you asking to extend? So I'm sorry. We'll have the roof extended. You know, another foot or so. To overhang, okay. Yeah. And, uh, well, on the north side, um, that would be visible from the public road because it'd be facing uh, Three Elms Road, right? Yeah, but all. Well, I'm just trying to. My understanding is all zoning always allows up to, I think it's up to a three foot soffit overhang. Okay. Now, that's what they were asking for. Uh, eligible line. The roof extent can, can be extended beyond that. Yeah, but you proposed a design and it was reviewed by Stony Creek Architecture Review Board, and now you want to put something different together. They may have no problem with that, but procedurally they may need to look at it. What you need to understand is they have no legal authority. They are, they supply suggestions, but they have no, that organization, Stony Creek I completely Village understand. District, has no legal authority to require anything. I can't well, Mr. Custer, we're, we're going to let our town planner finish his report. But that's so, not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying there's a process and they may need to be provided the opportunity to make that I recommendation, agree. not approval, not denial, recommendation back to the PNC. Okay. 
my, that's all I'm saying. Mild modifications. Um, if any. On page five of six, um, there's a reference, and this comes directly from the report of the Stony Creek Architecture Review Board back in 2018 to the actual company name that proposed the design you see in the bottom here, which is um, Custom Carpenters, I believe. Yeah. It says Country Carpenters. I don't know which one's actually correct, uh, but I would take it that this one is. Yeah. Um, I think it's a valid, perfectly valid point that Mr. Custer raises that he ought to be able to go to a different manufacturer or supplier um, as long as if they can provide exactly the same design yeah. that was approved by the commission. Um, going down to the last request to change is about the boat storage area. Um, I did go back and listen a bit to um, the public hearing testimony and the discussion of the commission during deliberations. And the commission, as a, uh, the, excuse me, the condition as originally proposed did not have the word permanent in front of it. There was a lot of discussion by the commissioners about was this condition um, it limiting boat storage in the property, all boat storage at any point in time to just that area shown there on the lower right of the property. Um, and my understanding of the, cons the cons consensus that developed was that um, the commission wanted to limit permanent, essentially winter storage to that area, but the transitory storage of boats and other parts of the property could occur. There wasn't really a definition that I remember seeing by the, the commission expressing about what exactly transitory um, was, but um, I would, you know, take that to be temporary and something where the grass isn't growing around the trailer wheels, you know, that kind of thing. But maybe we can clarify that. But that's my understanding of where and how this developed. Um, and I understand what Mr. Custer is suggesting that that not, he not have that limitation at all. So that's for you to decide, of course. Um, those are all the comments I've got, so I'll stop there. I just want to say one last thing, and I'll let you all know. Thank you all for your time and energy and, and help. I just want you to know that I've done so many things for the community down there. I contributed $1,500 to have the new launching ramp extended, which this gentleman took charge of. I <coughs> Uh, contributed as a, 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 as a committee for the dredging operation there. And many years ago, I tried to get the site that where the restaurant used to be down there to, to, to provide the parking lot as of 5 o'clock on Friday afternoon because we were going to sell that to a Garland Publishing Company. And, uh, and one of the locals had a problem. The bottom line was we were donating all the use of the waterfront to the town that stayed on the tax roll. We were donating the use of the parking lot after 5 o'clock. Everybody in town. So I've done so many things for the community. So I just want you to see that, just want you to understand that that is part of my reaction to doing things nicely. Thank you for your time. I'm Th sorry. Th th thank you, Mr. Crusher. Any further questions for the applicant or Harry before we open it to the public? Sure, Fred. Uh, how much land, uh, or um, excuse me, um, how large are the boats that you want to bring around the back? I, I have no idea widths and lengths of boats, but. Well, those boats are uh, typically 18 feet or less, except for one of my boats, which I've had on the property you know, ever since I had the property in 2000. Oh, I forget. I can't even remember what it was, 82? No. no, it was earlier than that. 22 foot Chris and it's still there, but that's going to go into the barn as a practical matter. Well, I'm just asking when you bring a boat around the back, you want to reduce the amount of landscaping, correct? I want to eliminate any landscaping. Okay, or eliminate the landscaping. So, I guess my question is how much, how much width do you need? How, how wide are these boats that you're bringing back there? Well, they're angled five feet, eight feet, 20 feet. I don't know. They're angled just to fit them in. Those, I think they're showing those to be 18 feet. They're, they're angled because this is only, oh, I think, uh, I think this is 20 feet back here. But anyway, again, this is not legally required to be my only parking place. 
practical matter, that's where I've kept them in the past, and I showed uh, on my site plan, because I was asked to show where I've been keeping them, but that does not mean that's where they're legally limited to. Anybody in town may have their boat stored, their boats stored, inside, except, anywhere on the property, except inside the street, my setback, inside my setback. Period. My, my question was about the legality of it. I mean, only asking a simple question. How wide are the boats that go back there? How, wide? How much space is between the back of the barn and the fence? 10 feet? Uh, I think that's 20 feet. 20 feet. 21.5. Okay. And, and so my question was, you know, you want to you reduce the, the landscaping. I have no concept about the size of a boat. So I'm just trying to compare the size of the boat to what you really need for open space. So by the time you have an 18 foot boat with a trailer, that takes up all, all that space, the nose of the trailer and everything else. And I'm, as a practical matter, I'm, I'm not always going to have all of them in there all the time. Sometimes they'll be indoors while I'm working on for storing, especially the wooden ones. I'm a collector. I was concerned more about, you have a set of doors back there. You said you might have to get a boat inside from the yeah. From the rear seat. So that, that was my question. Yeah. Well, length and width of a boat. All the other stuff doesn't is irrelevant to me. So no, you know, to get a boat in the back there, how big or how small a boat could you get back there? Well, if I, if I bring it around here, uh, the idea is to be able to bring it all the way If I bring it around here, that's an 18 foot boat on angle. So by the time the trailer and everything, it's, it's like 20 feet, so I'm not quite sure what you're I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what size boats are you planning to bring back behind there that you might be, be bringing into your barn? 18 feet, up to 18 feet. Yeah, okay, that's what, that was my original question. Okay, yeah, I have another question. Not all my boats are Can I, No, it doesn't matter. Can I ask something while you're on the boat thing? Go ahead. So when you park the boats, you're, you're bringing them in with the vehicle, right? So you have to bring the vehicle pulling the boat. Yeah, I can't walk it in. Yeah, and then I'm just concerned about the ability to maneuver it in that area. Well, you can see that the terrain here is all the speckled, you know, so it's... it's but you're going to literally have to, I mean, once you park, you have to park from the far right this way or from the far left that way to then stack them because you're, you're coming in, backing in I can park each this one. way, I can park straight back, depends on how many I got. And where it makes sense, but the idea is to be able to get all the way around this, because remember, this is the only above floodplain right. storage that I have. I'm just concerned about the turning radius with the car and the maneuverability. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I, I would love to see an engineer put that down just to, well, for your own, you know, I'd hate to see you build the bar and not be able to actually put the boats This there. is as little as 10 feet here. This is probably more like 16 feet or so down here. I can't really see with all my eyeglasses. But I mean, no, it could get all the way around. Right, so you're pulling a boat, you've got to make and the turn, the same, and then you're backing it in. And that's why the landscape would not go all the way around the corner, it would just go to the edge of the building so I could get around and out. I have, have a more second more question. Right okay. Marcy, I want to go, ahead. Yeah, go back. Uh, my, my second question was, are there any uh, legal challenges to your, against your property now? You mentioned something about a conflict with your neighbor. and and. It was said by ZBA that it wasn't well, I true. I can't speak for them now, but I can, I can tell you what the history is. Well, I'm just asking, is there one now, right now pending right now today? Well, I don't know. You'll probably hear from them, but what I'm telling you... Well, do you know of any pending today? Huh? Do you know of any pending today? It's just a yes or no answer. Okay, no, that's, no, that's all. You, you may hear it from me I, I, I don't know. Maybe, we'll, maybe, maybe we won't. I'm just asking you if there is or there isn't. I'm done. Thanks, Fred. Any further questions from commission members? Um, hearing uh, no more questions or any questions, Harry. Further, okay, let's open up the public. Any member of the public wish to comment? Yes, sir. Yes, you come up, uh, grab a mic, Mr. Lee. Thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Timothy Lee. I represent Sam Morris, who is the neighbor at 214 Thimble Island Road. Um, quite frankly, we had a difficult time evaluating this proposal. We had a difficult time determining exactly what Mr. Custer 
was attempting to do at the property. He did shed a little light on that tonight, but I'm still confused as to what he is trying to accomplish. We would ask the commission to require that Mr. Custer prepare a site plan that actually depicts the changes he wants to make. It's very difficult to piece together the various arguments and various pieces of paper and the various uh, things he's trying to say. We would ask that he, that the commission require that he submit a site plan. The site plan should show exactly what he wants to do on that property. It should show the changes that he would like to have made since the last time uh, the commission considered the site plan in 2019. If we have that information, I think everybody, the neighbors, the people who are here tonight, as well as the commission, will be in a better position to evaluate Mr. Custer's requests. Some may not be objectionable, some may be, but it's very difficult to tell without having a site plan uh, to do that. The need for a site plan, I think, is further buttressed by the fact that Harry has mentioned a number of times that he's been forced to go back and listen to minutes and try to piece together the different plans that have been submitted to his office over the last couple of years. I think if we just had one master site plan, uh, that would certainly aid in the evaluation of the proposal. Second point is there was a lot of discussion about the ZBA approval, and my client, Sam Morris, originally objected to the necessary, that, to Mr. Uh, Custer's request for variances. He and Mr. Custer came together, they reached an agreement, that was the agreement that was memorialized in writing that is referenced in the conditions of approval. Uh, those conditions and those agreements were important to Mr. Uh, Morris, and as a result of that, Mr. Morris agreed to withdraw his objection to the requested variances. In consideration for that, the ZBA approved Mr. Custer's variances. I think it's disingenuous at best for Mr. Custer now to try to say that that agreement is illegal or uh, not valid. Um, thirdly, to the extent there were conditions of approval in the Zoning Board of Appeals application, we would request that Mr. Custer have to go back to ZBA as well, seek modification of those conditions of approval from ZBA. Uh, before he comes back to planning and zoning and seeks modifications of, of that approval. I think those conditions were a necessary part of the variance application and the variance approval, and I think that, that he, Mr. Custer should go back to ZBA before he even comes back to planning and zoning and seeks a modification of those approvals. Um, fourthly, and once again, this goes to the issue that's very difficult for us to evaluate these claims without seeing them uh, on a map, uh, some of the buffering requirements were important from Mr. Morris's perspective. In essence, Mr. Custer is running a commercial operation at that uh, property. Mr. Morris resides there, and having um, the, let the vegetative buffer, having a, a distance between what Mr. Custer was trying to do and Mr. Morris' residence was very important to Mr. Morris. That was kind of the benefit of the bargain that he struck uh, with Mr. Custer in order to ultimately support the application. Uh, so we would like to see, once again, a plan that shows that uh, proposed landscaping so that we can determine whether it meets our needs. And maybe at that point in time, we, we would be here to support that change or object to that change. We don't know until we see that on the record. Um, fifthly, you know, we're, we're not here to make a personal attack on Mr. Custer. I know Mr. Custer made some statements about Mr. Morris. We're not interested in tip for tat. We're looking at this as simply a land use application. And either Mr. Custer has an application that complies with the zoning regulations or he doesn't have an application that complies with the zoning regulations. Either he's complied with the conditions of approval or he hasn't complied with the conditions of approval. So from our perspective, we're, we're, this is not a personal attack on Mr. Cusper. This is just Mr. Morris attempting to uh, make sure that his neighbor complies with what the benefit of the bargain, what was approved by planning and zoning, uh, and that Mr. C Mr. Morris's value in his property is, is protected as well. May I say? No, no, you can't. We're, we're, we're not. You, well, you have a chance after the entire public comments to I respond to the And when Mr. Cusper was speaking, I, I did take notes, and he did reference about eight to ten items that he was uh, looking to change. Um, if the inclination is for the commission to require Mr. Cusser to submit a site plan so you can evaluate it, I would like to withhold those comments until a later date so I'd actually see what, what's on the plan. If the intent of the commission is to not require um, a site plan, uh, then current, certainly I would intend to go through each and every. I, I don't know what our intention is because we haven't discussed it. The public hearing is still open. We, we don't know yet, so I would put whatever you have on the record. Okay. Um, well, 
Sixthly, I note that uh, Mr. Custer is here to seek a modification of the terms of his approval. He has claimed that those conditions were illegal. I would note that Mr. Custer, as any other applicant, has a right to appeal that decision to the Superior Court. He could have done that two years ago. At that time, he chose not to. Once again, I think it's disingenuous to come to the Commission two years later, say all these conditions were illegal, when he did not uh, assert his right to appeal those conditions to the Superior Court at that time. Next, uh, if Mr. Custer is here seeking modification of approval, he should show that there has been some kind of change in circumstance that warrants that, um, that modification. I did listen to the presentation. I did attempt to read some of the documents he submitted. I saw nothing in the record which would support, uh, nothing in the record that would show a change in circumstances which would support a modification of the approval. Um, What the first claim going through Mr. Custer's claims tonight, I have a, a notation that he was seeking a modification of the 10 foot buffer. Once again, we'd like to see that on the plans to see if that is warranted. Without seeing it on the plans, we would object to that modification request. Secondly, uh, the ZBA imposed a limitation of eight boats on that site. Uh, Mr. Custer is looking to modify that request. We think that that should go to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, before it comes back to planning and zoning. Thirdly, there was an issue regarding the guardrail. The guardrail was a requirement of the Zoning Board of Appeals approval. Once again, if he's seeking a modification of that guardrail, he should go back to the Zoning Board of Appeals, ask them to modify that, their decision before it comes to uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission. M Mr. Lee, when you say it was a requirement of the approval, what was you mean because it was on the site plan of that was presented to the ZBA? Or My what? recollection was it was a limitation in the ZBA that they limited the amount of the, the, the boat storage to eight particular boats. But the, the guardrail you just yeah. mentioned. Oh, pardon me, the, strike that, the guardrail. Yeah, the guardrail was shown on the plans uh, submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's also part of the discussion between Mr. Custer and Mr. Morris, in which Mr. Morris withdrew his objection to the variances <laughs> in order to uh, allow Mr. Cusper to represent that we supported the application. What was the purpose of the guardrail during that time? Can, just can you a, recap? It was in the, in the parking area, just to, to, to assure that the parking wouldn't expand or to... Uh, More or less. And Correct. they didn't feel that the rocks were sufficient to control it. Correct. Okay. okay. Do, is, do, have you looked to see whether there's anything that in the ZBA decision that says you can't modify anything on the site plan without in the ZBA decision says you can't get, you can't apply, it was just approval of variances, but did it say it was, you can't change anything on the site plan presented unless you come back to us? Is that a condition of approval or, or do you know? I don't, honestly, I don't okay. know the answer to that question. I, I will say that um, we opposed, Mr. Morris originally opposed the application for variances. Mr. Cusser made representations that he would modify the site plan based on those representations. We consented to uh, the, the, the granting of the variances. We did enter into the written settlement agreement, which we will privately enforce, even if the town does not enforce that. So it was an essential element of our support of the variance, and quite frankly, the ZBA would not have approved the variances over the objection of the neighbors if not for uh, that agreement between Mr. Morris and Mr. Custer. So we certainly feel like it, by seeking the modification of, of this at the planning and zoning, we are not getting the benefit of the bargain. We are not getting the representations that were made to us at uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals. The relocation of the dumpster, uh, there are neighbors uh, that are going to speak to that. Uh, that was, once again, an essential and a major discussion at, at the ZBA level, and that was important to a number of people. Um, Plantings along Thimber Road, I understand that he wants to modify those plantings. Once again, we may or may not have an objection to that. We'd like to see what those modifications are. We'd like to see a planning plan. We'd like to see what he's proposing. Uh, maybe we're, maybe that would be acceptable to us, but we, don't, we just don't know because there's been nothing that would allow us to make that determination. Uh, with regard to the runoff on the roof, once again, I think that is the applicant's obligation to come to you with a plan that says, hey, the town engineer wanted us to put underground storage of the drainage. I don't want to do that for whatever reason, but I think um, he needs to have his engineer design an alternative or present an alternative to say, under these circumstances, we should be able to do A, B, or C. He hasn't done that. There's simply no basis 
for his layman's opinion uh, that you should take to supersede the opinion of your town engineer without something from Mr. Preddy. Um, once again, the timing of the permits, I think Harry covered that issue. Um, I, I don't want to go belabor that point. I think Harry's discussion on that, uh, we, would, we would tend to agree with. Um, with regard to the, the agreement between us and, and Mr., uh, Mr., between Mr. Morris and Mr. Custer, once again, that was an essential element of the ZBA approval. It was submitted to the Planning and Zoning Commission. We do intend to assert our right. It's a valid contract. It's signed by both parties. There was consideration for that contract. We intend to enforce our rights under that contract, whether those rights are inconsistent with whatever modification the commission may or may not make. It's still a contractual right that, that we intend to uh, uh, enforce. So I just want to advise Mr. Custer that no matter what the commission may or may not do here with regard to this modification, you still have an agreement with Mr. Morris, and Mr. Morris intends to I support no that agreement. agreement. So with that being said, uh, once again, we would ask the commission uh, for a site plan. If the commission does commit a site plan, we would reserve, require a site plan. We would reserve our right to review that site plan and come before you with any additional comments that we have at that time. Thank, Thank you. May I respond? Thank you. Not, not yet. I can't respond to his comments? Not yet. I want to hear other public comments. I, okay. We'll, we'll hear from other public, and then you can respond. Yes, other members of the public wish to comment? Yes, sir. You can go around. My, uh, my name's David Diatri. I own 43 Elms Road directly across from a Phoenix property. It's hard to know where to start here uh, because there's so many issues. First, I'd like to just say that I've been full support of the barn. I think it's functional, it's architecturally pleasing, it, it, not, it does uh, unburden his property to a certain extent with good parking for his boats. I think he did an excellent job by designing it. Some of the other issues I can't speak to. I don't know about agreements with neighbors that may, may have occurred in the past. I do think I could comment on a couple things. I think the guardrail is probably not a necessary thing, uh, given the location of the property. I think the reorganization of the dumpster for easy access for a truck, uh, and of course that's a public, health, uh, public safety consideration, so the police department or Department of Transportation ought to look at that carefully, but if that could be accommodated, it makes a lot of sense to me. The third thing I could just comment, or fourth thing, third and fourth is, the underground storage uh, for runoff on the garage, I think that uh, somebody could do a, a runoff calculation for him uh, on a new site plan, which would indicate if the property has the ability to absorb that water, rather than putting some surface retention in that could have an adverse uh, effect on the septic, especially the area that we're in. The soils there do not perk well, and you don't want to overload them. Uh, the landscaping, I think that Peter has made a real effort to try to come up with some good landscaping. I'm sure he'd be amenable to, to modifying it. I would just love to see a decision made one way, in a way that all these things could be accommodated on both sides, both the concerns of neighbors and Peter's willingness and passion for this project. And uh, I've only been in Stony Creek for about five years. It feels like 50 years, but um, it, it's a complicated community. Everybody has a vested interest, and they should. They're proud of the community. They want to see things done well. I think Peter is trying very hard. He gets a bit emotional. I don't want to see him have a heart attack before this project is completed, and I'd just love to see the project go ahead. No, not yet. Any other members of the public wish to comment? Do I need to use a mic or? Yeah, you can. Probably should. Sure. Uh, good evening. I'm Barbara Chesler. I live at 83 Elms Road with Karen Dow, also of 83 Elms Road. Um, 
I, I have a few comments. Um, first of all, I, in response to what Mr. Lee had said, um, I, I, my first question, I, I, I have more questions than probably statements, but that is, it's really hard for me to understand why we are here tonight. Um, this could have been handled two years ago if he wanted to appeal what the decision of the commission. Um, and um, this project has been going on, as he alluded to, for six and a half years. And it started um, due to a violation notice he received, and it's just kind of gone forward from there. So in my opinion, we're not even here to talk about the barn tonight. We're here to talk about the fact that um, he was told that he had to adhere to a certain number of conditions in order to build the barn. And we've all, everybody on Three Elms Road has been waiting for some action to be taken. And in fact, one um, other comment I would make, and that is um, a, maybe a, a good reason why we're here tonight is that one of the questions that I had two years ago and did not, there was no answer to, and maybe we can answer it tonight, and that is, if he never builds the barn, when would he have to adhere to the conditions that were required by the commission? Because this has been going on for nearly seven years to the date, and nothing has happened, not one thing. And again, we probably wouldn't be here tonight if Mr. Custer had taken any steps, just one, any step, to um, answer, to respond to the conditions that have been asked of him. So um, we're, we keep going over and over again. It's a, sort of a delay tactic, in my opinion. Um, the barn is the barn, whatever happens. I'd hate to see those beautiful trees torn down and I don't think it is an, um, an added adherence to the neighborhood, but that's not the, what we're here about tonight. We're here because he was told two years ago, almost to the day, that he had to adhere to these conditions and not one thing has happened. So um, that's, that, that's really my, my statement. Um, we are not, we still have many, many boats on the property. Um, now there's a berm of dumped materials where, with grasses growing through them. There's a boat on the street that's been parked there for six months or more. That didn't, as he has he appointed to, as he as he alluded to again, an valuable parking space on Three Olds Road. Um, that belongs to him, um, and I think that's probably it. So I. You know, I ask of you, the commission, to you. It, um, I know that it, um, it doesn't really matter in my mind, as he would say, um, quote, logical and reasonable in his mind, that these are his requests. But this is, in my opinion, about the rules and regulations stated by the town of Brantford and your decision that was made two years ago. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, other members of the public wish to comment? to Pete, one, one uh, property up. Uh, I just wanted some clarification, Pete, when you're, you know, when you're speaking, I, I wouldn't mind some clarification on the windows on the eastern side of the building. Uh, I would like to hear more detail about that. Also, I mean, we're, we're behind the diagram, so I can't see wh where you're pointing about the boat storage area, um, so I'd like more clarification on that. Also, the path that's gonna go around the barn, that's gonna allow you to tow boats, you know, onto the property and off the property. Uh, I'm curious if you're, if, if that's gonna be paved or if that's just gonna be grass. Um, also, is the apron that we discussed gonna be paved? Um, and then I also just wanted to echo previous comments that I think the guardrail on the outside of the parking lot um, on Thimble Island Road would be overkill and unsightly. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you already speak? Um, what? 
Make one quickie. Go ahead. Again, thank you. I'm Barbara Chesler from 8 3 Elms Road. Just one other comment um, regarding the runoff of the, in that site. Um, if any of you have ever been down there after a heavy rainstorm, um, there's significant runoff. He has a stone um, gravel driveway, and at the end of almost any good heavy rain, there's a pile of stones at the bottom of um, Three Elms Road um, coming out of his driveway. So there's some type of gully or something's running from somewhere. I don't know where the water's coming from that's pushing the stones down the driveway and into a pile at the crosswalk of Three Elms Road and a Thimble Islands Road. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Any, any other members of the public wish to comment? Okay, Mr. Custer, you can respond. All right, I got a number of things to respond to. First of all, the attorney for the neighbor is complaining that he, that, uh, he has not seen a site plan. I told you people that I would provide a site plan once this is all approved. You people have been provided with all the site plan, small sections of the site plan changes, which is available to him and he never got. So the fact that he just wants to make this held off even longer because of that, as far as I'm concerned, is irrelevant. As far as the, uh, the, the, the validity of the agreement, I'll read it to you, unless you already read it, but it's absolutely non-existent and they even they submitted that to me only 15 minutes before the meeting with a lot of pr a lot of <coughs> pressure to have to ag agree to some of it but we subsequently agreed to the fact that it was not to be submitted to the planning and zoning people at all and then they did it anyway even though it was already signed and agreed not to and there were so many changes in that thing that there was, it was irrelevant to begin with um, if you want to know the specifics of why it's invalid, I'll be happy to read them to you, because I wrote them down to you in, in uh, the, the one that's uh, uh, <coughs> the, the, it's called the correspondence, P and Z correspondence A. Now, the only reason it has taken so long is <coughs> uh, we went through COVID, so there were no public meetings, which were essential. I had physical limitations, which made it impossible for me. I had atrial fibrillation, then they gave me a, 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 a ablation. The ablation overcooked me, so my heart rate was running between 37 and 51 beats a minute. So then I had to have a pacemaker put in, okay? <clears throat> uh, I had prostate cancer issues, which has all been addressed and, and, and fixed. And then when the COVID thing came along, we couldn't, couldn't do a damn thing. And the only reason I had uh, uh, relocated the dumpster to where the ZBA uh, asked me to is because I had an idea about the plan that I've since shown you, which makes a lot of sense. I had no problem with them originally locating it there, as, but as far as the neighbor's concerned, Sam Morris is concerned, the original requirement and intention of the ZBA was to put that dumpster at the end of the parking lot right next to his land. And I fought for the right to have it at the other end so it would never affect him. I am being cheated with this crap. Pardon me, but I just... And then they snuck things, in. so after they revised the thing, they snuck some other things into the issue, or into the, into the uh, agreement that I never had a chance, never had agreed to. And they were demanding that I sign it, literally within a few minutes before the agreement. Otherwise, they were going to go against me. So they were holding me ransom. Either sign this thing or we're going to go against you. I'm telling you, the way the business was done was terrible. And that neighbor has done so many things illegal, and I've done nothing illegal. And I'm going to file formal complaints if I have to on that. As far as the, uh, I don't know what else. To say. That's why I wanted to comment earlier, because I can't remember everything he said. But uh, uh, as far as what she is saying, I wouldn't explain why it took so long. And it was not my desire or intention to have it go that long. But they originally were the pathological obstructionist objecting to the boats in the yard. So then 
I said, well, okay, we'll, we'll build a barn, we get some of the boats indoors. Then they were opposed to the barn. I mean, it's illogical. I've done so many things to try to help the neighbors, and then also the neighbor that just spoke here a second ago. He's gonna get a larger view of the water. He has no view of the water right now. And as far as windows on the back of the barn is concerned, they're not essential. I just thought that would be good for natural light. And, uh, and there's, and there's going to, I'm allowed to have a six foot high fence back there if I, if I want to, so he wouldn't even have to look at that. I'm trying to make him give, enhance his view of the, the harbor. And by eliminating those trees up there, and I, which I have every right to do, not only because they're in the way, but also I don't want them falling on my buildings. We've had several hurricanes which, and, and the buildings all around us have been torn down. I have a right to remove the buildings that are a threat to the, to the, to the house and to the barn. And uh, <clears throat> yet I'll leave a couple of the, uh, uh, couple of the trees. Did I say buildings? I mean trees. Uh, the, a couple of trees I, I will have, which are very nice looking. But <laughs> anyway, I, I wish I could have responded earlier because I can't remember everything he said. But as far as him, and, and, and I will supply a, a, a formal site plan once this is done. But I have already done that to you gentlemen and ladies. And he could have seen it and never did. I don't know if that's all of it. Okay. okay you want to hear why this agreement is invalid? Want me to read it to you? Uh, I, not, you don't, you, you, you don't have to. I, I don't know what the agreement says. And I, I don't, well, I, it's, it's dead, but it's, uh, okay. I, it's, but, but I, but I can tell you why, if you want to know. I, and, and it's on so it, one of these. It, it's a matter, it's a private matter. So we, we enforce zoning regulations. I, know, but we, I don't know, see, I don't. he has no right or access at this point to be fighting. He has planted this pool, pool filter on my property. He's reported he's put his fencing on my property. He's put a new ter terrace on my property. And he's done so many things without any building permits. I'm trying to do everything legally. And he's condemning me? <laughs> Sorry. Thank well, you, Mr. Kusser. I seem aggravated is because I am, after six years of trying to get this done and then put up with this nonsense. And incidentally, uh, thank you, Mr. Kusser. Is that it? Yeah, the, the, the objection of the, of, the, of the woman there, she's been holding up. The, she, she's one of the people that's caused all the delays. So to say that it's a delay and that she resents that is absurd. They're responsible for it. For some of it, anyway. And they have broken the chops of every neighbor, not just me. I'll tell you. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Thank Kuzner. you very much. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to be so. Sure. sure. Any uh, qu further questions by commission members or staff? Then. Uh, should we close this matter as a public hearing? Yes. Okay, we're going to close this matter as a public hearing. And uh, thank you all. I don't know if we'll discuss this later or not. Uh, probably not. So. Uh, I would like you to read your stuff that I gave you. Yeah, absolutely. We have, we'll have a chance to review the materials. And, uh, thank you for your time. Right. Okay, so thank you very much. That brings us then uh, to item numbers five six and seven on our agenda all of which are Brantford summit apartments llc uh, one is the zoning map amendment to add the commerce park to, uh, zone the incentive houser housing overlay zone to the properties in that area <coughs> second application is special exception multifamily IHOD development and the third application is a section 6.8 associated uh, grading application with the IHOD multifamily development and here is so for these three applications I understand they're still before wetlands and there's some sewer questions so I understand are we uh, are we not, not going to yeah ex excuse me uh, folks can you guys move your conversation outside please Uh, Mr. So, Chairman, uh, we did have a communication from the applicant's attorney, uh, Nicholas Mangione, and he has requested that the hearing be open and continued without testimony to the 21st, um, and that's all three applications. Okay. 
So then uh, for items five, six, and seven, we will uh, open those and continue those applications to our public hearing to the public hearing to our regular meeting on October 21st. And that completes our public hearings for this evening. Uh, brings us now to minutes. We have minutes of our September 16th meeting, I believe, were presented to us. Yeah, I, we, Mr. Chairman, we did receive a communication from uh, Catherine Learned uh, from 5053 Lamphere Cove Camp. And she writes to ask that the commission correct the draft minutes for the 9-16-21 meeting. She says that under item number five, 12 Sunrise Cove Camp, uh, the public input section incorrectly lists me and another speaker, Scott, M-A-U-T-T-E, should be listed as residing at and property owner of 51 Lamphere Cove Camp, um, and that her, Catherine Leonard, should be listed as residing at owning 5053 Lamphere Cove Camp. Okay, so we want to correct some addresses for yep. uh, a couple persons on that. So, um, I'm sorry guys, can you take it outside? We're conducting a meeting. Thank you. So is there a motion to approve the minutes with the correction to the uh, addresses for those two speakers uh, on the uh, Sunrise Cove application? Motion made by Joe, is there a second? Second. Second by Joe. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, minutes are approved. Okay, correspondence, any other correspondence? Uh, we do have some correspondence. Uh, we have three pieces. Uh, the first is a notification of an application from the Siting Council, Connecticut Siting Council, uh, for the swap out of nine antenna, antenna I guess, at uh, current um, cell tower at 50405 Brushy Plain Road. Um, they would be replaced by three uh, 5G ones of the same height. Um, have another cell tower um, notification respect to a uh, tower in a, in a fake um, water tower down on um, Leeds Island Road, um, Medlin Farm, and the proposal is to swap out antenna currently within the fake water tank. Um, so you wouldn't see any change in the outside. These would also be uh, new 5G antennae. Um, and we did receive a notice from East Haven regarding an application for a zoning text amendment. Unfortunately, the public hearing uh, was yesterday. Um, so we received this on the 20th, which was after the last meeting. So I apologize that it didn't get to you earlier. It regards um, adding some changes to um, uh, provide for assisted living facilities as an allowed use in one of the zones. Um, and also do some definitional changes and changes the parking schedule if you're interested. This is East Haven uh, changing their zoning to allow for assisted living and to uh, add a requirement for parking for assisted living, basically. I don't know where exactly in town. All right, thank you, Harry. By law, the adjacent towns are supposed to give us notice when of applications that could affect or within 500 feet or could affect land close to Grant. Okay, so that brings us to old business. Item number one is uh, BC Investment at uh, 175 Cherry Hill Road, 11 lot subdivision. And uh, that's a matter that we need to set a public hearing and I think we'll just do that very, or, or do you want to suggest a date now or do you? Um, actually, um, I just heard that the uh, pending application for the wetlands, the applicant has requested that be delayed um, so, um, I think if we might want to follow the, the standing motion that Mr. Chair, you and I can set the date of the hearing, right. so it might make more sense to push it off, you know, to the last possible date is, uh, November 4th without okay. a time extension. Okay. So then we will, for that matter, uh, Harry will, Harry and I will set a public, public hearing date in consultation with me and we'll set a deadline for any. So item number two is ALMR 4 3 Elm Road, special exception modification for multifamily dwelling. And I understand that that's before the ZBA, is that correct? Uh, that is before the ZBA. They were to have a special meeting um, Tuesday, which uh, they ended up canceling at the applicant's request. 
Um, I believe the applicants engaged an attorney, so he would like that person to be present at the ZBA. So that is going to be heard at the regular ZBA meeting on the 19th. Um, so consequently, um, I think there was also an issue with notification of the neighbors. So that is now pushed off until our regular meeting on the 21st at the request of the applicant. Okay, so we have a public hearing that will be on 21st. 21st right. is looking to be a big night. I right, think. so the hearing is not was not open tonight, of course, and uh, the applicants agreed will notify, uh, pr excuse me, present notice in the New Haven Register and the sound to comply with the law legal requirements. Okay, then that brings us to new business. Item number one is uh, Syed, Semi Syed Sami, uh, 49 Leeds Island Road, special exception modification to expand the convenience store. This has been on our agenda a number of times. And uh, we have a public hearing scheduled for our next meeting as well, October 21. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Brings to item number two, which is 13 Sycamore LLC. It's a site plan for research lab and office. And I understand that just came in. So you're, that's not a public hearing, though, right? That's just a site plan? Correct. So we'll just schedule whenever it's ready. Uh, item number three under new business is Gary Fowler, 61 Flax Mill Road, a special exception for grading, 6.8. Also just came in, understand needs wetlands approval, is that right? Um, I believe so, Evan, right? Yeah. So we'll just schedule the public hearing whenever it's ready, but it's not going to be next, it's not going to be the 21st, right? No. <laughs> no. Right. And then item number four, another special exception for grading. Uh, 18 Brook Hills Road, and that's also a new application, same deal. Um, we'll schedule that whenever it's ready, is that right? Correct. Okay. That brings us into other business. Uh, item number one, the opt-out of the new state statutory provisions. Um, that's the uh, accessory apartment that we've discussed, that uh, state statute requires that allows us to opt out of the mandatory accessory apartments, which would allow them anywhere in, in any dwelling. And we have to have public, if we want to, it allows us to opt out and we're scheduling a public hearing when that's uh, also- For on, the 21st. On the 21st as well. Right, right. So, got a big meeting, guys. John, you're gonna go out with a flurry, right? <laughs> <laughs> when is John's last meeting? 21st. John, John is claiming that uh, the 21st is his last It's not too late to change your mind. He's been very quiet lately. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so uh, anything anything else under uh, planner's report here? Um, I'll just note that we did have the uh, initial meeting of a steering committee for the affordable housing plan, and Mr. Chadwick was at that uh, last Monday night. Uh, and... Um, making plans, have a survey put out. So we'll be reviewing a draft survey probably at a second meeting on the 18th. And uh, we'll get all that to the commission so you can participate in the survey and distribute Great. it as you wish. Um, and uh, moving ahead with that. Great. Is there any other comments you want to make about it? Last time we talked about it, you hadn't formalized the full list. Are you going to share who's on it? Oh, sure. Um, I mean, I can do that right now. Let's see if I text my memory. Um, of course, Mr. Chadwick. <laughs> um, uh, Peter Semino, the uh, executive director of the counseling center, has agreed to be on it. Um, Robert Imperado, the chair of the Brantford Housing Authority, has agreed to be on it. Uh, Mariana More, who used to be an RTM member and has some background in working with affordable housing projects um, is also on it. Um, two uh, folks who are participating in the uh, meetings at the uh, Council of Governments about affordable housing have had monthly sort of workshops. Um, they are both on the Community Foundation. One woman's name is Stephanie Farber. I believe she used to be the uh, president. And another woman named Rita Berkson. Um, and finally, um, one of the uh, pastors of one of the local churches, um, Reverend Perry of the AME Zion Church is on it. You know, working with Glenn Schalder, who's working on planet conservation development, he's a selected consultant, of course. And, and Harry, just refresh us as to what the out outcome of this. Is this going to be a plan? It's going to be zoning regulations, a plan? Uh, is um, it this commission or the uh, RTM or Board of Selectmen? And what's the deadline? 
um, the deadline, we need to have a plan adopted in place according to state statute by June 1st of next year. Um, the adoption process provides for the municipality, in quotes, to adopt it. Um, there was discussion at the meeting that that um, would preferably be the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, which seems to make made most sense to, I believe, the steering committee and the consultants comfortable with that. Um, we could, you know, check that as a legal matter, make sure we comply, but it sounds like that's the the most reasonable route. So it would come back to you. Um, there would be, as part of it, no actual regulation text amendments proposed, though there may be recommendations for changes to the regulations. Um, so essentially it's going to be a public input, information gathering, data collection effort. That's the first part of it. Then there'll be an examination of the strategies and, and possible ways to increase affordable housing um, that are available and then a winnowing down of those into what Brantford might want to, um, what the committee and what public input and what's reasonable to propose. Um, there would be a recommendation of the plan. And then um, finally is the development of the written plan itself, which has some parameters that are in guidelines promulgated by the Department of Housing. So we're going to have all that as part of the affordable housing plan that'll come back to you to have a, you know, I think when we get to the draft stage, we certainly want to have a, a meeting with the commission and have the consulting come to that and present the draft. I mean, the, the analogy is the PLCD where we had like a working yeah. group that, that came up with something, but then it came to us and we actually had a public hearing on it. So exactly. I, I don't know if that will, we would do. Yeah, there is a public that. hearing required and that would be, okay. uh, I think, appropriately held by the commission. Okay. So, so we need to get to us. If, if the date is June 1st, it's got to get to us by. Yeah, know. and the, the consultant's well aware of the deadline has built yeah. that kind of lead time into the process. So, yeah. sure. so th they're going to prepare actionable recommendations that we could incorporate into the zoning, or do they become like? Well, there would be uh, basically recommendations to possibly change the zoning or do a number of other things. So then we'd have to go through that. Then you have to go then. draft the regulation changes to implement them, okay. and go through that afterwards. So like the TOD had, you know, yeah. suggested an overlay zone. Yeah, the TOD yeah. actually had draft regulation changes as part of it, but this would not. But, um, you know, to implement the, this plan, the commission could draft up some regulation changes and have a hearing and adopt those. Yeah, it creates a basis for it. Yeah. And yeah. those recommendations could be different from the state, depending on their findings with the public hearing or... Like the, I well, I don't know if it's going to certain recommendations. I don't know whether we are. I don't think they're going to be so. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be so detailed. I mean, there's nothing that I understand would force you to consider or adopt regulation changes. It's just recommendations to plan. So it's not it doesn't carry the weight of you know, any legality well, I mean, that would I, require. Just further to act. clarify what the goals are for the town relative. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how specific they would be, but. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they would certainly be adopted as, you know, you'd be making a statement that you're in support of them by adopting it, of course. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on your planner's report here? Um, is there anything else you want to add? Um, oh, we have bond, which we have not added to the agenda. So we have a request um, from uh, Mr. Vigliotti um, with respect to uh, 77 Todd's Hill Road. Um, so you would need to add a request to establish a bond for 77 Todd's Hill Road and outstanding work at that property. Um, yeah, the request is to establish a proof of bond in the amount of $850 for driveway and landscaping. So if you know if you want to add that. So a motion to add that to the agenda. Do that motion first. Moved by Joe, second by John. Further discussion, all in favor? To add it to the agenda, is there a motion to what are we doing? Is it a new bond? Uh, to establish a bond, to approve a bond establishment for the amount of $850 for the driveway and landscaping. We have a memorandum from Dylan Willett um, recommending that the commission do that. Is there a motion to uh, approve a $850 driveway landscaping bond as Harry just described? Motion made by John. Is there a second? Second, Joe. For discussion, all in favor? Aye. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Motion to adjourn, someone? Motion to adjourn. Motion by Marcy. Is there a second? Second, Joe. For discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye.
This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.